Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Monica and uh, today I'll be explaining you regarding one of the most important fluid properties called as uh, capillarity. So I think uh, before getting into the concept, uh, let me tell you some practical examples of capillarity. Uh, okay, you generally water the plants, right? You generally give water to the plants to grow. So you generally water the plants at the roots level. So, but this water is passing all through the roots to all the branches and all the stems and it's going to the leaves of the plant. How? This is due to capillarity. And similarly, um, you place any tissue or any water, I mean, uh, any paper or any cloth inside water or uh, something like that what happens we generally wipe out the water with a tissue or a hand cloth right so what is happening the water is entering into the cloth that's due to capillary capillary action and similarly um, how ink is able to flow through the refill and it is coming to the nib is due to capillary action similarly we generally lit diyas in front of god right so you pour oil and you place a cotton thread inside it and slowly the cotton thread slow starts absorbing the oil it means that the oil is entering into the cotton thread and that's also due to capillary action so like this you can quote number of examples for uh, capillary action so capillarity is sim simply nothing but the uh, rise or fall of a liquid surface okay it's nothing but the movement of liquid along a surface to tell you very generalized way it's nothing but the movement of any liquid or any fluid along the surface okay so coming to technical definition this capillarity will be generally the rise or fall of a liquid inside a small tube adjacent to the general level of liquid okay so we consider this capillary action whatever example still now i have quoted you can observe all those are uh, uh, I mean, uh, wherever I have quoted the example of capillarity, though, there the what do you call the place where this capillary action is happening, happening is very uh, less in diameter or very small. Relatively, if you observe the roots of the plant, they are very thin. Similarly, the cotton thread, all the those are called capillary fringes. They are very very small. So, this capillary action takes place in a small liquid in a small surface generally. So you observe here in this diagram. I have a uh, two tubes or two what you call say bowls in that I have placed this vertically capillary tube and uh, you observe one is filled with uh, water and one is filled with mercury so in the capillary tube whichever was filled with water the water slowly rised up why because the density or specific gravity of water is very less so automatically water starts traveling along the glass tube okay Similarly, if you take mercury, I have dipped the same capillary tube inside mercury, but you know mercury is very much heavier. You when you just take a small droplet of mercury in your hand, you feel a lot of weight. So due to that, it can't rise up, it can't go upward, but still it will try to settle somewhere very closer to the beginning of the capillary tube. So in these two cases, you can observe there is capillary action taking place, but once it is rising and once it is falling. So this phenomenon of rise or fall of a liquid surface in a small capillary tube adjacent to the general level of the liquid. Okay, in comparison with the general level. Here you observe this was the general level and the rise of water was greater than this. This is the general level, the fall of mercury was lesser than this. So that's called as capillarity or capillary action. If the rise takes place, it's a capillary rise. If the fall takes place inside the capillary tube, it's called as capillary fall or capillary depression. So this rise or fall we generally denote in terms of height. So capillarity is measured in centimeters or mm or meters. But in general, most of the cases we measure capillarity in centimeters and mm only. Let's see the expression for capillary rise. I'm talking about capillary rise. So what I'll do is I'll take a uh, what do you call a complete tube or complete bar, tub, tub of water, and inside I'll place a glass tube, which is open at both the ends remember capillary tube will be open at both the ends and what will happen obviously it's filled with water so, so water slowly starts rising up in the capillary tube as you can 
into the general level it will be greater than the general level okay so that rise only is denoted by small h that's the uh, denotion of capillary rise which is small h and that value we will be calculating right now so i have a capillary tube uh, yeah so uh, as i've told you the surface uh, the tube is open to atmosphere on both sides so what is happening from one side water is entering inside and the other side is open to air okay so see the uh, here you have a meniscus formation generally you can observe this for any liquid it will be a meniscus formation for water it generally looks flat okay like horizontal shape so here you have a liquid water and here you have air so i was talking about surface tension in my earlier videos where one liquid and one gas comes into contact you have surface tension the surface of that liquid will be subjected to surface tension or else when two immiscible liquids come into contact with each other also there is surface tension coming into action so here you have a liquid and air so there is this upper surface of water will be subjected to surface tension okay so h is the rise capillary rise and sigma is the surface tension theta is the angle of contact between the liquid surface this meniscus and the glass tube okay so first of all let's see how to establish the equilibrium of the liquid which is inside the glass tube see here we have two forces one is weight of the water which is acting vertically downwards and you have surface tension force which is acting upwards so one force is acting downwards which is weight one force is surface tension force which is acting upwards so both are equal and opposite in direction hence you can establish equilibrium condition here so first let's calculate what is the weight of the fluid inside this glass tube so that weight of the fluid inside the glass tube is equal to formula is area of the tube into h into rho into g how this formula came is if you remember the formula for specific weight which i told you in properties specific weight is given by the formula rho into g correct but what is specific weight actually it's weight by volume so weight by volume is equal to rho into g correct so weight by volume can be written as area into one of the dimension here one of the dimension is height i know h so weight by area into h is equal to rho into g so from there what can i weight as right rho into g into area into h that's what is this okay so area of the tube it's a circular tube so obviously it's pi by 4 d square into h into rho into g this is the weight formula which is acting downwards next i have surface tension force right now you see here the surface tension force is something like this okay so if you remember um in your um, engineering mechanics you'll be taught say suppose you have a force f okay please ignore my bad handwriting so you have a force f like this which is acting with an inclination of theta then this component will be f cos theta and this component will be f sin theta remember similarly our sigma is like that now in the place of f there is sigma so one component will be along horizontal direction and one component will be along vertical direction so the component along horizontal direction will be sigma sin theta why why because and just show you now yeah see suppose if your force is like this and if theta is here okay so the component adjacent to theta will be a cos component but now here you see what is our case our case is like this this is sigma and theta is inclined to the vertical why what did i tell you theta theta is the angle between the glass tube and the water surface so according to my concept the component which is adjacent to theta must be a cos component so this will be sigma cos so obviously this horizontal side will be sigma sin that's what is here that's why it is sigma sin theta okay now horizontal component is component is sigma sin theta that's fine but let's calculate what is a force surface tensile force so that's equal to you have a formula for surface tension right sigma is equal to tensile force divided by the surface along which it is acting correct so from here what is tensile force equal to 
sigma into the surface so this is equal to sigma into what is the surface here it's a circular geometry means it's along the periphery which is along the circumference what is circumference of this glass tube pi into d why because you know the diameter into already i told you the horizontal component is sigma sin theta vertical component is sigma cos theta we are writing the vertical component why because i am telling the surface tension is acting upwards so i require a vertical component so it is sigma cos theta into pi d so finally it became sigma into pi d into cos theta i am repeating please listen carefully the upward component is sigma cos theta into the surface i should multiply why because the formula is sigma into s so in the place of sigma i am taking sigma cos theta why because i am writing vertical component into surface means here this is a circular geometry so into pi d so that's how you got sigma pi d cos theta so weight is acting vertically downwards surface tension is acting upwards now for equilibrium what do you have to do just equate both the equations now i'm sorry yeah equating weight and surface tension force so just i'm equating both so what will happen pi and pi will get cancelled 1d and 1d will get cancelled uh, so we'll be left with h i want h right capital capital so h is equal to 4 sigma cos theta by rho gd this is what you'll get so this is the formula for capillary rise and uh, this is a generalized formula for capillary rise if for water i told almost the surface looks flat hence theta will be 0 so cos 0 will become 1 so h becomes 4 sigma by rho gd so in numerical problems when there is something related to water is given they will not give you the value of theta so you should directly put up this formula okay this is the formula for capillary rise let's go for capillary fall so for capillary fall what you should do you should take a heavy density liquid something like mercury so i am taking a tub of mercury and i am immersing a glass tube into it so since the specific gravity of mercury is more it can't go to a higher level than the general liquid rather it will fall and that's the capillary fall now it will be similar to the earlier case the meniscus will be reverse direction and uh, you have a hydrostatic force which which is trying to push the mercury upward but uh, due to the weight of the mercury it's not possible but still you have a hydrostatic force which will try to make it to move upward that's why your meniscus is like this and uh, you have another uh, surface tension force obviously why because again there is air and mercury in contact with each other so the two forces which we need to consider in capillary fall are surface tension force and hydrostatic force so surface tension force formula just uh, already i have explained you in the last uh, last slide which is sigma into pi d into cos the same component but here it's acting downward direction but the component magnitude is same hydrostatic force is acting upward now so hydrostatic force means you have formula which is pressure is equals to force by area so from there hydrostatic force f is equal to p into a so p into area area of the glass tube is pi by foot square so we have a formula for hydrostatic force or pressure p which is rho into g into h so rho g h into pi d square by 4 okay so just equate both the equations here i have missed out by 4 so here you'll get by 4 yeah just equate both the equations you'll get again the same formula h as 4 sigma cos theta by rho g d so the formula for capillary rise and capillary fall are the same okay but how to know whether it is rise or fall yes capillary rise means you'll get h value positive for uh, capillary fall you'll get h value negative that only indicates that it is capillary fall but magnitude wise the formula is same so for uh, glass tube and mercury the value of theta is generally 128 degrees okay so i have a numerical problems check here the first question is calculate the capillary rise in a glass tube of 2.5 mm diameter when immersed vertically in water and mercury so i have a glass tube of diameter 2.5 mm which is 2.5 meters which is immersed once in water and once in mercury so once you immerse in water you'll get a capillary rise once you immerse in mercury you'll get a capillary fall so here the sigma values for both um, mercury and water he is asking us um, calculate the capillary rise so it's as simple as that you need to four into sigma value say suppose if you are doing for water four into sigma sigma of water is given next into cos i 
but for water they don't give the angle it means you can take up this formula directly so 4 into sigma the value is given by rho what is density of water 1000 g is 9.81 into d is 2.5 into 10 power minus 3 finish you'll get the value of h the second case was in mercury so for mercury you can take up this formula 4 into sigma value is given for mercury 0.52 uh, into cos 1 uh, here yeah here they gave take 130 degrees if it's not given take 128 but it is given take 130 so into cos 130 by what is rho what is density of mercury they gave specific gravity so specific gravity is given means what is density s into 1000 so 13.6 into 1000 will be rho into g is 9.81 into d is again 2.5 to 10 power minus 3 that's how we'll get the values of capital h values the next question uh the capital rise in the glass tube is not to exceed 0.2 mm of water means h value itself is given Determine its minimum size given that the surface tension for water in contact with air is 0 0.7 to 0 0.75. You have to again come back to this formula. Here they are telling that they gave you the value of H. They are asking diameter D. So from here what will be D equal to? D will go here. H will come here. So it will be D equal to 4 sigma by rho G H. So 4 into sigma value is given already 0 0.5. Uh, 0 0.0725. This value just substitute. 4 into 0 0.0725 by 1000 into 9.81 to h is how much it is given in mm so convert into meters 0 0.2 into 10 power minus 3 finish you'll get the value of diameter so like this you need to solve for okay so i hope you understood this video thank you